everybody. Welcome to our online service for Central Christian Church today in Janesville. Uh, my name is Kellen Anderson, I'm the campus pastor. I just want to take a minute uh, to welcome you with us. If you're visiting uh, this church online for the first time, we're glad that you're with us. You can go to centraljanesville.com uh, and there is an information card online that you can fill out on there. Just let us know who you are. Uh, we'd love to, to get to know you a little bit. Um, but we're going to continue on in some worship right now, and so I'm just going to say a quick word of prayer, and, uh, and yeah, we'll get back to some music. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this morning, this time that we have uh, to sing some songs and to get into the Word. Uh, God, I pray that you would do in our hearts what you want to do. Uh, make us open and available to you in whatever ways you want to speak to us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
everybody, this is The Loop. Just letting you know a few things that are going on at Central Christian Church in Janesville. Uh, first off, next week is going to be Mother's Day, and so uh, we are going to do some baby dedications. So if you would like to have your baby dedicated uh, next Sunday, let me know. Uh, contact me at kellenanderson at centralwire.com. And really what baby dedications is, it's, uh, we, don't, we don't actually uh, baptize babies, but we do uh, bring them up on stage, and really it's about you as, as parents dedicating your kids uh, that you will f- do whatever you can to help them know Jesus as they're growing up. And so uh, it's just a great time for us to, to do that for you as families and, and us as a congregation uh, to kind of stand alongside you and say, we'll do whatever we can to help you as well. Uh, got a few opportunities coming up for you to engage in prayer with other people. Uh, Thursday, May 6th is the National Day of Prayer. Uh, and there's gonna be an event at Sears, at the Sears parking lot in Janesville. And that's gonna be at noon, uh, this coming Thursday, May 6th. And so I wanna invite you to that if you wanna come out and, and pray on the National Day of Prayer. Also Saturday, May 22nd at 10 a.m in the the chapel at our Beloit campus. We're going to have a a central prayer time together there as well. Uh, And so you can register by visiting centralwire.com and go to the registration page for the greater prayer event. And so uh, that's the the stuff I've got for you. I also want to let you know at the end of the sermon here, we're going to take communion together. So feel free to get up and and go and get stuff for communion. Uh, Also, if you want to give as a part of your act of worship, uh, you can go to centraljanesville.com and you can click on the online giving link. Also, you can use our Give app. Uh, It's G-Y-V-E and you can sign into Central Christian Church that way and you can give that way. So uh, that's all I got for you for the loop. Now you're, this is the loop. Now you're in it. You guys, I love you. I thank God for you. Hey, if you're with us for the first time, man, we are delighted that God has called you to be in this moment with us. And you said yes. You're doing more than joining us. You're joining God as he longs to speak into your life. And and we all need, I mean, could it be that God has great purpose for your life by drawing you into this moment? Could it be He wants to speak into any struggle you face with this truth. Jesus is greater. We all need that reality at work in our souls. Man, I need it. Jesus is greater. And the truth is there is a struggle beneath all our struggles. And we all have struggles, but there is one struggle beneath all of our struggles that kind of eats like a cancer away at our soul, and it's the struggle of shame. I mean, we all sin, and human beings have struggled with shame and sin as long as there's been a human race. I mean, look what happened. The very first time, the very first human being sinned against a holy God. Check it out. At that moment, Adam and Eve, their eyes were opened, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. They sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. They hid from the Lord God. And the Lord called out to the man, where are you? And the man replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid, I was afraid. They they sinned against God. I sin against God. You sin against God. And when we sin, um, we do with our lives exactly what Adam and Eve did with theirs. Number one, we hide from God. Number two, we start to do life afraid. There is this undercurrent of fear going through our lives and it just won't leave us alone. And we try to cover our shame with fig leaf stuff. Now, fig leaf stuff is anytime we overdo a behavior trying to combat the shame that we feel. Um, maybe for you, it's uh, over the overdoing that has a hold on you is overeating. Or maybe for you, the overdoing that has a hold on you is 
over drinking or, or maybe the, the overdoing that has a hold on you is overspending. I mean, it can be anger. It can be pride. It can be insecurity. There, it, it can be hurt and bitterness in our hearts that we just go over and over and over that has a hold on us. Now, the Bible calls these behaviors, this way of thinking that has a hold on us, calls it shame, calls it a shameful stronghold. Now, a stronghold keeps you chained up in the hurtful thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. It's just like you're bound up by the hurt, by the shame. I came across a love letter from shame this week that I wanted to share with you. It reads like this. Dear friend, I'm moving in for a long, painful stay. I love to watch you suffer in your mind, in your emotions, in your relationships. My plan is to keep you so full of anxiety you can't relax. I want to keep you annoyed, nervous, irritated, angry. I want to remind you of your sin so that you always feel guilty and full of regret. I want you mad at God and the world for the way it is. And I will see that you blame everyone and everything else but yourself for the way you are. I want to keep you full of despair and self-pity. I want to keep you empty of hope and peace. I want to keep you away from Jesus and his cleansing power, yours forever, shame. Yours forever, shame. And you, you may say, David, dude, you've been reading my mail. That's what I go through all the time. And I'm trying to get free. I hope, I hope. This will help me get free. Or, or maybe you say, well, you know, that's a little uh, intense for me, but maybe you can connect or relate uh, more intimately with what the Apostle Paul said he went through when he did things wrong. In his shame, here's what he writes. I, I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I can't. I do what I don't want to do, what I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong. My bad conscience proves it. And we just shake our heads at ourselves and think, you know, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Why am I like this? And, and it's just like shame burrows deeper and deeper and deeper into our souls. But here's the great good news. Good news number one. Jesus is greater than all our shame. Man, I need that. I'm believing you need it. Jesus is greater than our shame. He can drive it out. Here's good news number two. Jesus can shatter all our strongholds, all our fig leaf stuff, all the things we try to use that will not work, that just makes us feel more guilty and more ashamed, all the fig leaf stuff we try to use to cover our shame. Now, to teach this, I want to take you into a Jesus story. Actually, it starts as a boat story. Jesus and 12 of his closest friends, it's nighttime, and yet they climb in a boat, and Jesus has ordered them to leave their side of the lake and sail over to the other side. Look at the Word of God. Jesus and his disciples arrived on the other side of the lake. Say other side. You see, the other side was the wrong side. The people who lived there were of the wrong race. They practiced the wrong religion. They worshiped pigs. Oh my gosh. It's the dark side. It's a dangerous side. No one in their right mind would go to the other side. And they think Jesus has lost his mind directing them to the other side. And as they cruise into the shore and take down the sails, the disciples cautiously climb out of the boat having all their fears realized. Um, 
just as they get out of the boat, it feels like they're stepping into a scene from The Walking Dead. Out of a nearby graveyard, burial caves, comes running at them, a wild, crazy guy, totally naked, screaming at them at the top of his lungs. And they're like in panic mode, bailing back into the mode, thinking, you know, I knew this was a bad idea. What was Jesus thinking? Let's get the heck out of here. But, but Jesus doesn't move away in fear. He, he moves forward toward this wild man. Check it out from the word of God. As Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs. They were like caves in the side of a hill where dead bodies were buried, came out of the tombs to meet him. Um. These guys had no idea. I mean, it is still dark. It is an eerie setting. They had no idea that when they were landing this boat, they were landing alongside a graveyard. But I think as I read this story and study this story and go over this story, that this is why Jesus ordered them to the other side. This is so like Jesus because he was always trying to lead his followers and us to lay down their prejudice and love people who look different, who believe differently, who act differently. To show, I mean, Jesus shows this man unconditional respect, unconditional dignity. He shows this outcast acceptance. And this was the way of Jesus. He was always touching those deemed untouchable. He loves every kind of person. Jesus was tearing down um, gender barriers and racial barriers and religious barriers. And he, he calls us to love that same way that every human being is made in the image of God. And every human being is worthy of uh, more than unconditional love, though unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. But also every human being is worthy of unconditional respect and unconditional dignity. Now, and this guy is on the wild edge of things. This man, this man lived among the burial caves. That was his home. He could no longer be restrained even with a chain. Whenever he was put in chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains with his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. For a long time, he had been homeless and naked. Now, how, how dangerous, how unloved, how unaccepted does a person have to be that they are, uh, their friends and family attend, attempt to, chain them up and put them out by themselves alone in a burial cave where all they have around them is dead bodies. Th this man was isolated, alone, and, and just full of, of shame. And um, I don't know if you noticed that part about him cutting himself with sharp stones. Um, back in the 90s, I, I was regularly intrigued by a band called Nine Inch Nails and some of their work. And um, Trent Reznor, uh, back then he wrote a song about his heroin addiction, heroin addiction and his depression uh, called Hurt. To tell you the truth, I'm really more familiar with the Johnny Cash cover. In fact, Google it. Watch Johnny Cash sing this song. Feel the, the, the anguish. Um, here's the opening line of the song. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel. I focus on the pain. The only thing that's real. Um, through the years, the people I've known who do self-harm, man, this is their song. They, the, their pain is, is the only thing it feels like 
That's true. That's what it was like for this guy. It's like the only way he could feel was to feel pain. That was the only thing that was real until he met Jesus. In this person-to-person encounter with Jesus, um, he, he discovers, he is introduced to the ultimate reality. Jesus is the ultimate real deal. In fact, check out the text. The story goes on, while Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In the name of God, I beg you, do not torture me. Uh, For Jesus had already said to the spirit, come out of this man, you evil spirit. Um, You know, this is something I need from Jesus for me. Uh, And and I believe that you need it for you. Jesus looks beyond outward appearance. I think we need that. He looks beyond this man's wild uh, behavior, his psychotic episodes, um, his nakedness. And he looks right into the guy's deep spirit at his inner evil enemy. You see, throughout his ministry, Jesus warned us that we have an enemy in the person. It's a very personal enemy in the person of Satan. Jesus called Satan a liar and a murderer whose only agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's just 24-7, never takes a day off, works overtime to steal our joy, to kill our hope, to destroy our homes and, and, and relationships. And, and, and you got to know that, that your enemy is the evil one. Your enemy is not someone who holds a different political view than you. you your, your enemy is not someone that believes differently or holds a different opinion or even comes up with a conspiracy theory. Your most personal enemy is Satan himself. In fact, the Apostle Paul said it this way. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Now, I believe that Jesus ordered his men to go to the other side. Yes, to to tear down a racial barrier, a religious barrier. But he also went, went to the other side for this one man to free him of his shame, to free him of Satan's hold on him, and not just hold on him, but Satan's hold on this whole area. You see, the good news is Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater than all the powers of darkness that come against us. I love that song we sing. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Um... Just as the disciples were afraid of this man and the people that chained him up and put him in the caves, the burial caves, they were afraid of him. (laughs) In the same way, these demons in this man, they were afraid of Jesus. Look at the text. Jesus demanded of the demon, what is your name? The demon responds, my name is Legion, for we are many. He begged Jesus again and again not to send him out of this dark, godless area. Out of this dark, out of this darkness. And I don't know what level of darkness you're experiencing in your life. I've got my own personal battles with darkness right now. You've got yours. And what I remind myself of to deal with my darkness It's what I want to share with you right now. Here is light, truth number one. The light of Jesus is greater than your darkness, greater than the darkness within me. So I got to keep turning to Jesus. I got to keep looking to Jesus. I got to keep opening myself up to his light by pouring in his word, by coming before him in prayer, by committing, by admitting my sin and confessing my sin and let Jesus shine his light on me. Here's light truth number two. The truth of Jesus, it pierces your darkness. It, it, it just, it will defy your darkness. And light truth number three, the light of Jesus chases away your darkness. This is, this is my prayer for me and for you. 
Pray this way for yourself, that the darkness, be aware of your darkness. Be aware of the, your evil inner enemy that wants to darken your heart with bad, bitter thoughts and bad, bitter emotions. Be aware of the darkness and then open yourself up to the light of Jesus that that is more powerful, that is greater than the darkness, that pierces the darkness, that chases the darkness away. Here's the word of God. The light, Jesus, shines in the darkness and the darkness can never, never, never extinguish it. The light of Jesus can extinguish the darkness in me, but the darkness can never extinguish the light of Jesus. And I'm praying that, that, that right now some of you are longing for the light, the light of Jesus, that, that some of you are ready to see the light and move toward the light. It's just that I know that some of us, we we can see the light. We're just not going to move until we feel the heat. We can see the light, but we won't move until we feel the heat. You've heard it said, well, they've got a hit rock bottom. No way. Your life does not have to fall apart. That does not have to be true of you. You don't have to wait until you hit rock bottom. You can move before you feel the heat. You can move when you see the light of Jesus and move toward the light. Let the light draw you. Let the light fill you. Let the word of the light consume your soul. Let the light be stronger in you than the dark thoughts, than the dark emotions. Well, at this moment, there was a large herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby. And the demons begged Jesus, send us into those pigs. And so Jesus gave them permission. And the evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. With the spirits went the shame. With the spirits went the darkness. Into the man came the light. Into the man came the love. Into the man came the hope and peace of Jesus. Out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake. And, and we're drowned. <laughs> In my imagination, um, I know I'm weird, but I hear Jesus yelling at the pig herders. Hey, pig dudes. You think pigs are God? Check out who God is. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy, along with 2,000 others, runs down the hill into the lake and drowns. So much for your gods. Well, I don't know. I'm just weird. But here's what we do know for sure. Those pig herdsmen ran into town, woke everybody up, called everybody out, told everybody what had happened. And so the town turns out torches, lamps to see Jesus. And here's what they found. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were afraid. Man, there's a lot of fear in this story. They were afraid when they saw the man they knew. They knew he was violent. They knew he was dangerous. And they knew he was crazy. They knew he was wild. They knew he was a raging lunatic. They knew they tried to chain him up, keep him isolated in these burial caves. But now here he sits. At peace, Uh, like a radical calm had come over him. I mean, they could see it in his eyes. The guy guy was the same as they were. And and, and did you catch that? He was fully clothed. This guy that for such a long time had been homeless and naked is fully clothed. Now, I, I can't prove this, but if I were a betting man, I would bet it was Jesus who removed his robe and wrapped this man in his robe. And in so doing, wrapped him in his love and mercy, wrapped him in his peace and compassion, wrapped him in his everlasting kindness, his unfailing love, wrapped him in mercy, wrapped him in himself. I I often tell people who are being baptized, hey, you are being clothed with Jesus. You're being clothed with the goodness of Jesus. It's more than than something that's just washing away your sins. You're going to walk out of this experience clothed in the goodness of Christ. In fact, remember 
Adam and Eve, that first story of the first sin, and they tried to cover their shame with fig leaves, and the fig leaves wouldn't get it. I mean, after a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God, God clothed them with what would get it. God took responsibility and clothed them in garments of skin. I believe it was lambskin because Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That, that's what I need. I, I mean, yeah, I, I need to be free of my shame, but I need to have my sin taken away. And, and that's what can happen for you right now. That, that Jesus is ready just to wrap you in himself, in his love, in his peace. You, you know, by, the Bible says that he was made to be your sin. That you might be made, that you might be wrapped in the righteousness of God. Jesus took your place, my place, our substitute on the cross, paying for our sin. And we, we get to be dressed in his glorious perfection. He takes upon himself, readiness of our shame takes upon himself all our ugly, evil imperfections. It gives us all the glory and beauty of his perfection. You can be wrapped in Jesus right now. In fact, I, I, I want to lead you into a, a moment of prayer that will achieve just that for you and for me, for us. Would you bow and pray with me right now? Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to have a God. Oh, you are so majestic and mighty. Creator God who made everything out of nothing. But you are so good. You are so good that you would be willing to dress us in Christ. In fact, Father, we humble ourselves and pray that right now. Dear Father, would you dress us in Jesus? We believe that Jesus is God who died for our sins, whom you raised from the dead, who is exalted to your right hand. That's our Jesus. Jesus, you are the light of our lives. Extinguish the darkness in us, the darkness of shame. Pierce the darkness. Chase away the darkness. Jesus, we believe that you are greater, our Savior, our Lord, our King. We thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for your victory over the grave by which you unleashed for us deep compassion, everlasting kindness, unfailing love, immeasurable mercy. Superabounding grace. We want to be dressed in you, Jesus. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you. I thank God for you. May the light of Christ shine in your hearts and set you free. When the storm is raging all around me. For the peace that calms my troubled sea When the cares of this world darken my day You are the light that shines and shows me the way And all the beauty of your majesty On the cross you showed your love for me
I just want to thank you again for uh, being with us for our online service today. Uh, I want to continue to encourage you just to go out into the world and make disciples. And so uh, I want to pray a quick prayer of blessing on you as we end our time together. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time together. Uh, once again, realizing just how incredibly great you are. Uh, we ask that you would do in us what you want to do in us. Uh, help, our, help our hearts to be completely open to you and help us to make an impact in the world the way that you'd want us to make an impact for, for Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great week. We will see you soon.